Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over a recent addition to my dot files, which is this set theme script. And when you run it with a supported theme, then your terminal, tmux, vim, and fcf colors are all gonna get switched over to this theme. For example, if I open up my vimrc file, we'll see that things are set up now to use one dark. But if I go back over here and switch this to Groovebox, and by the way, check the cursor color out as well, that is all gonna switch over now to Groovebox. And if I open up my vimrc, there we go, it's all Groovebox all the way. In addition to that, you can also do a toggle BG flag, which is going to toggle between light and dark mode. So back in about mid 2020, I did have that toggle dark mode script and I made a video about that one. This script is basically a successor to that because this supports multiple themes, whereas that toggle dark mode script, it had hard coded values for Vim 1. Also, besides being able to do toggle BG, you can also combo that with changing the theme as well. Like right now we're in Groovebox light mode. This will switch us over to one dark mode. But lately, I found myself going back to Groovebox. You know, I used this back in 2018, and uh, I think it's a great theme. But I got bored of it, so I switched to Vim 1. And then it was like, eh, pretty cool to use that for about a year, getting bored of that as well. And now we're back to Groovebox. And it was sort of a pain point to configure things to use Groovebox again, because it was like, oh, I had to go to my terminals editor, our config file, change the cursor color, change the color scheme of that, then change like half a dozen colors in tmux, then change the color scheme in vim, then change some uh, bash rc file for fcf or equivalent if you're not using bash rc. But you know, long story short, there was like 10 things I needed to change. And I figured like, well, I'm a lazy person. Wouldn't it be nice to have a script where I can just run a command and then have it switch over? Also, you know, if you don't like Roofbox or one and you'd rather use a custom theme, then it is pretty easy to add a new theme to this, right? It's always the hardest to go from supporting one thing to two. But now that we have support for two, well, adding like five themes wouldn't be that difficult at all. So so let's go over installing this. And by the way, even if you're not using my dot files, then it's still fine. It's basically just a zero dependency Python script. But you know, if you are using my dot files, then I've updated the documentation here where you'll just need to add a new sim link here and you know, pull down the updates as well. But you know, this set theme script just needs to be moved over to local bin set theme so you can run it from the command line. Also, super important to call this out. And by the way, I did update the readme here, like you know, it just references the commands that we just ran and the supported themes and whatnot. But I am using the Microsoft terminal. And if you're not using the Microsoft terminal, then out of the box, this script is not going to work because you know, how is it gonna know to change your uh, terminal settings with out knowing like what terminal you have, right? So you may need to modify that script to get this to work. And there's a call out here, like if you get an error about your terminal config, uh, you'll need to make one change to this script file. So, you know, there are uh, fact items here for both adding custom themes and supporting different terminals. And that's even includes, like if you use the Microsoft preview terminal, then you will need, to, you, know, you know, you'll need to make this change here uh, for the first one, because technically, the, you know, the path to where the config file is, is different. But, you know, before we get into that, you know, let's maybe just go over uh, adding a custom theme, right? Because maybe you don't want to use Groovebox and maybe you don't want to use one and you want to use something else, which is no problem at all. So if I go back up here to the fact, it says like, you know, how to add custom themes to the set theme script. So let's do this together. So it says, you know, after installing these dot files, or if you're not using my dot files, but you did something similar, then you will have this uh, file here, right? The set theme script. And step number one is to open the file. So let's do that together here. So if I go to Vim here and I open up this file, then here's the zero dependency Python 3 script. It is about 200 lines long. Took a couple hours to write, but I think it's worth it because I never have to worry about setting themes again. But okay, let's go back over here and it says step two, check out the themes dictionary near the top of the file. Cool, so let's go back here. That is that dictionary over here. Um, it is on line 12 right now, but this may change in the future if I modify the file, but just look for the themes dictionary. Okay, great. We're already like uh, a third of the way there. So it says copy one of the existing themes dictionary items such as Groovebox or one. Cool, okay, so this is a dictionary that has keys and values, right? Groovebox is a key, then the value is an object, and if you scroll down here, like that's the whole thing. And uh, yeah, so let's just copy the one for, for one. And also if you're using Vim, by the way, if you uh, put the cursor on top of like a squiggly bracket like this, you can just hit the percent key, and that'll jump you down to the closing one. But uh, let's just do it the old fashioned way here, which is just selecting this whole thing, copying it down to that closing bracket, then we just need to paste it in, cool, and then add a comma because we have a new item. Great, so let's go back to the readme file here and it says we need to rename that dictionary key 
to whatever your new theme's color scheme name is in Vim. This is really important. The key basically needs to be the name of an existing color scheme. So we have one and Groovebox uh, because these are now both installed in my VimRC file. But now let's change it to a different theme. So you can run a color scheme space tab, and this will give you a full list of all the themes that you can set. And you have Groovebox here because it's been installed, and all the other ones are basically default ones from Vim. But let's set the color scheme Elf Lord because who doesn't want that? That seems pretty cool. So there is uh, that step. Now going back to here, step five says we need to basically go in here now and change all the colors to be whatever we want, right? Like if we're choosing a different theme, we need to just modify the colors. And the way this dictionary is set up, there are objects for dark and light mode. And then within each mode, like dark and light, there are settings for terminals and tmux and things like that. So the terminal one, uh, the way the Microsoft terminal works is, you know, there are certain themes that are available by default, like one half dark and one half light, and you can set the cursor color, but Groovebox is not installed by default, and we'll get to that in a second. But still, in any case, we need to start changing these values around for Elf Lord. Now, there is no Elf Lord uh, theme built in for the Microsoft terminal, but there is one called uh, Campbell. So let's just use that one for now as an example. Cool. And then for the cursor color, I don't know, I think this is a dark theme. So let me just go with like a pretty bright color, right? Uh, some almost white uh, cursor color. Then for Tmux, we have these 256 color ANSI uh, numbers, which I don't have memorized, but let's just like modify these numbers to be something else, right? Like, I don't know, 62, cool, 240. Well, actually, let's go with 130 and then 243. Fine, let's go with like 179. I don't know. And then for the light mode, we need to do the same thing. Now, when it comes to Campbell, I am pretty sure there is a variant called uh, Campbell PowerShell. And uh, I don't even know what it looks like. I think it's like a bluish theme. So blue and green should not go together very well, but we'll see what this looks like in the end. But uh, yeah, we need to change around some colors here. Cool. Technically, we don't need to change them, right? But you know, this is the process you would go through if you were adding a custom theme. So let's just go with, uh, I don't know, uh, 40 for this one. Great. So we just completed that step. We made our, all of our modifications. And now it's saying, well, you can just run set theme, cool theme, you know, replacing cool theme with whatever name that you used in step four. So we used Elf Lord. So if we close this file here, now I should be able to run set theme Elf Lord. And with any luck, everything will change. So we have some blue here for Tmux. And, uh, you know, it's a black background. I can jump between different terminals here. And uh, yeah, cool. So let's see what Elf Lord actually looks like in Vim. So there is my VimRC file. So uh, what do you guys think? Would you use this full time? I'm guessing probably not. Uh, it's just a little bit uh, disgusting to look at. Although I do like this like uh, magenta or fuchsia color or whatever, everything else clashes kind of a lot. <laughs> but uh, let me actually close that and then we'll go back to uh, the set theme here. But yeah, that was it, right? We just, we successfully added a custom theme. Now, if you were to add a nice looking theme, not this Elf Lord one, and you do want to submit it back as a pull request, happy to have that in, right? Just include a screenshot for light and dark mode like this, then uh, we can add it to the readme. And now everyone can use a brand new theme, right? Uh, maybe Solarized or something else, right? There's a whole bunch of great themes out there. So that is customizing the theme. Now, there is another fact item here about like, what if you're not using uh, the Microsoft terminal, right? So there's some other steps here that you would need to do. For example, we'll go back to that set theme script. Uh, really what it boils down to is changing a path to where the config file is initially at least. So that's a step one. So it says, you know, change the terminal config variable to reference your terminal configs path. Cool. So uh, this is killing me. So I'm gonna jump back over to Groovebox over here just so we have uh, a little bit easier time to see stuff. And there we go, back to Groovebox, yay. Uh, also, I'm gonna get rid of this elf word here entirely. So that is gonna go away, that goes away, that goes away, and then I think we're back to normal, great. So this terminal config was step one that we just looked at in the readme file. And what this is, is it's a path to where your terminal config file is. On Windows with Microsoft Terminal, you know, that's gonna be in like C, users, then you get your Windows username. And, you know, I tried to create a function here that dynamically gets your Windows username from WSL that just calls out to PowerShell, like this username environment variable. So then it gets popped in. So you don't need to modify this. That was kind of nice. Uh, but, you know, if you're not using, and by the way, if you're not using my DAF files, 
by default, things will be mounted to mount slash C like that, not just slash C. So you, you may need to make that change as well if you got some errors. But in any case, you know, this is the value that you, you would need to change to be whatever you want. You know, even if you're not using Windows and you change this, then this function is not going to get called. So you don't have to worry about like it throwing errors or whatnot. This is the only spot where this is referenced. But okay, let's go back to here. And it says step two is change the regular expression in the change terminal theme function. Okay, so let's go to change terminal theme which is this right here. And it says we need to change, uh, you know, this regular expression as well as the search and replace. So basically this is a little function I wrote, replace in file. It takes in a regular expression and it is going to replace this regular expression with whatever you put here and then on a specific file, right? This is the variable that you may need to modify. So with the Microsoft terminal, the way the settings.json file is, it's a JSON file is, uh, yeah, we have color scheme, which sets the actual, uh, the theme. And then we also have cursor color, which is, you know, a hex value, an HTML uh, formatted, you know, six digit hex value for the color. Great. And if I go into the settings that JSON file here, I don't know, oh, I opened the wrong one. Where's the one with my name? Oh, there it is. Huh, that's the first time I've ever seen FCF just totally fail. I guess it's trying to give me a very strange, oh, you know what? I know what's going on. I'm going to have to blur this out because I'm actually in my home directory, not the dot .files repo. So that's why we're getting all sorts of like, you know, 156,000 files. So I'm sorry, FCF, you did a great job there. But in any case, uh, yeah, let me open up that uh, settings.json file, the correct one, which is this one over here. So this Microsoft uh, config file is a JSON file, but it has comments. So technically it's not valid JSON. That's why it's getting uh, this red highlight here. But we can see, right, color scheme, Groovebox dark, and then there, there's the cursor color, which by the way, Groovebox is not installed by default when it comes to using the Microsoft terminal. But if you're using my DAF files, then you get this new addition here where I added both Groovebox dark and light to uh, the custom schemes here. So those are just gonna be available. These uh, I found while Googling and I just popped them in here and uh, they look pretty nice. So going back to this one file here, right? If you're using a custom terminal, then you'll just need to change these to be whatever formatting your custom or your terminal provides, right? Like I don't know what those are off the top of my head because I don't know what terminal you're using, but it shouldn't be too bad, right? Just editing these two things and uh, you'll be good to go. And then finally, also when it comes to the terminal, you know, you will need to install whatever theme that you're referencing, right? We just went over uh, how I installed Groovebox on the Microsoft Terminal theme, but if you're using something else, then you'll need to install Groovebox 1 or whatever, you know, whatever other themes that you may want to do if you're using a custom theme uh, using, you know, the methods that your terminal supports. But that is it when it comes to customizing both the themes and the terminal. Uh, before we wrap this up, there is one kind of interesting thing about this. Uh, where is this at? Somewhere in here. So I've done other videos in the past going over how to create command line tools with Python. But uh, have you ever seen maybe like those meme developer quotes about like funny commit messages or weird ones where it's like, you know, this code technically isn't being used, but if you remove it, then everything breaks. Well, this is my first time in like 20 years of development where I had to do something very weird to make things not break. So when you run this script with the dash dash toggle BG flag, every once in a while, and it's fixed now apparently with the sleep, uh, it would either one, completely crash the Microsoft terminal like it would just hard crash, or it would corrupt your settings.json file to the point where it would get reverted back to its default state as if you just installed the Microsoft terminal with no customizations. Like it wasn't an empty config. It was like the default like skeleton JSON file you would get out of the box. I have no idea what was happening there, uh, but adding a sleep for one second here seems to fix it. And the way I tested this was, you know, I just ran the script a whole bunch of times manually, like hitting the up arrow as fast as I can to like do the toggle BG stuff. And that's where I noticed the bug initially. And then I put it into like a while loop, sleeping for like 100 milliseconds. And uh, I've also done a video about doing bash while loop, so you may wanna check that one out as well. But in any case, I found out like within 15 seconds of doing that loop, it would like get corrupted or the terminal would blow up in every case, uh, pretty much like 90, 80, whatever percent of the time. Uh, within a minute, it would happen like 100% of the time. But then with a the sleep here, suddenly all of those problems went away. And that is why if I run a uh, set theme, like uh, Groovebox toggle dark mode or toggle BG, there's like a one second hitch there. That's not because like the script is slow. It's like there's an artificial sleep in there. So if I do it again, you can see again, waiting for a second. But if I run like this to here, or, you know, without the, without that flag, then that sleep is not gonna be there and it's basically instant, right? It's like within, I don't know, 100 milliseconds. But in any case, going back to here, 
yeah, I let this thing run in a while loop for 45 minutes and it hasn't corrupted my file. So I'm pretty safe to say that it's probably fixed, but you know, if you don't have your config uh, file backed up, specifically the Microsoft one, because I don't know if this is gonna happen with other terminals, then you may wanna back up your settings.json file just to be extra, extra safe. But in any case, yeah, it's one of those things like, like half the lines of code in this script is just documenting this sleep because I don't want to remove it one day and be like, why the heck did I put it one sleep there and then uh, or sleep for a second when uh, yeah they just caught some weird edge case. So going back to here, yeah, if you wanted to add a custom theme, feel free to open a PR if you'd like. Uh, if you have any issues with the script, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer all those questions. With that said, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps. And thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.